Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and now we're set for our first major conversation. We're still going to talk about the new Naira notes, the redesigned Naira notes. You want to call them that? <laughs> Some call it the re refurbished Naira notes. I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, it's become the the stuff of of jokes in recent time, you know. And uh, of course, I think Messi had to laugh when I reminded her that. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria said the new notes were washing off because they're new. But the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, through its governor, uh, Gordon Mayfield, on October 26, 2022, if you recollect, uh, announced that the new Naira notes will be introduced to replace the current 200, 500, uh, and 1,000 Naira notes in circulation. And indeed, on Thursday, uh, December 15, 2022, uh, we all saw the news on Twitter, on, on, on Facebook, where... President Buhari was standing with Gordon Mayfield at the uh, uh, Federal Executive Council chambers holding up these new notes and commissioning them. And Nigerians said, oh, they're not new after all. They are still the same old designs, but with new colors, like you can see there. So uh, that was on, sept on December 15, 2022. The redesigned Nigerian currency came into effect on the 15th of December. But we saw them unveiling it before then. Uh, the governor of CBN also said that the existing notes would cease to be regarded as legal tender by January 31, uh, 2023. Now, the Nigerian Governor's Forum is the latest to add its voice to the conversation. They are calling on the Central Bank of Nigeria to consider the poorest and most vulnerable households, uh, among other concerns arising from the recent Naira redesign and also the cash withdrawal policy. The chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum and governor of Sokoto State, uh, Aminu Wazidi Tamuau, uh, in a statement at the end of the forum's first meeting of 2023, expressed the need for the central bank to consider the peculiarities of states across the country, especially as they pertain to financial inclusion and underserved locations and communities in the country. Now, joining us this morning to discuss the impact of the Nara redesign policy on marginalized communities uh, in the country, we have Achina Sa Collins Obo, who's the head inclusion for all initiative uh, civil side organization. Uh, Chinna Sa, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning, Kofi. It's nice to be here. All right. And um, before we dive into the conversation proper, what, what, tell us about inclusion for all initiative. What do you do? Okay, so Inclusion for All is essentially an advocacy initiative that seeks to, first of all, deepen the knowledge and understanding of the barriers that keep poor and marginalized communities excluded from the formal financial services. And we do that by working with different actors within the financial inclusion and broader ecosystem to advocate for the removal of these barriers. Okay. Okay, interesting. So, so what are your thoughts as uh, an advocate for the financially excluded uh, we look at vulnerable communities mm -hmm. in the country. Um, you feel that these this, these uh, uh, segment of society will be heavily impacted negatively by the policy and the deadline we're counting up to January 31? Absolutely. So because, you know, these are the people we care about, whenever policy decisions are made, our first reaction is to understand using data to say, look, this is how this decision is going to affect the groups we care about. So I'll put that into perspective. So... In 2020, FINA released their A2F Access to Finance report, which showed that there's 38 million unbanked people in Nigeria, unbanked adults. That, that's a, a, a large amount of people. It's a large amount, we and can, that's we 2020. Can, we can multiply that by two. I know. <laughs> and, and basically what that tells us is there's a huge population of um, these people, and if we sort of do a deep dive into that number, it's people who live in... Um, rural communities, so they're likely to be poor, even likely to be women. That's some of the analysis we've done on inclusion for all. And we've also um, established that, you know, poorer people are less likely to get access to some of these formal services. For instance, even getting um, the national identity number, which is a campaign that we're currently running and been running for over the past 12 months. So, yes, the, the poor people are always at the um, receiving end in a negative way of these decisions. And over the past 12 months, so for instance, in April, in April 2022, the um, NCC made that uh, mandate decision to cut off calls for people who hadn't registered this. And our reaction was, this is going to disproportionately affect people in rural communities. And then come to, like some months after that, then we have the narrow redesign. And our reaction is, 
this is also going to disproportionately affect these poor people. So it's almost like a double whammy to wow. two events that affect these people disproportionately through no fault of theirs because, because they, don't have access they don't have access to to first of all look at it this way these people the reason they're currently cash driven right and the reason they're cash driven is for things such as the banks are too far from them so they, they don't, don't they, trust they, they, they can't tax, they can't use the cashless mode of uh, for transactions so I, I mean so again let me not say they can't they can it's just that do they have so if they're going to use the cashless solutions which okay. is taking the agent to them, then they have access. Because the problem is they can't go to the bank. But then CBN over time has tried to use the agent network model to reach these people. So bringing bank into their doorstep. The challenge now is there's still a gap in the agent coverage. So for instance, we know that um, from the report that was released at quarter Q4 last year, mm -hmm. with agent coverage, looking at the agent network, we the CBN has a target of 20% for the Northeast. And it's still at 6.3 as that last check. So yes, they're trying to reach them, you know, using the agent network, but I don't think they have the sufficient network to reach them just yet. All right, so um, my concern would be if these are the issues that we have, how come, you know, our policies have not, you know, been geared towards improving the agent's gap and what, just like you have rightly mentioned now, uh, why is it that we have not had policies? And do you think that in the formulation of this uh, new narrow note, some people say uh, the governor did not consult stakeholders. Uh, do you think that in, in this policy formulation, redesign uh, the entire process is still ongoing, replacement and what have you, do you think that this group of persons were factored in? So I'll be careful to answer that question, and here's why, because I wasn't in the room with them. <laughs> but what I do know is I believe that stakeholder consultations must have held. The concern or the challenge we have, and because we understand that this, this policy is actually well-meaning. In fact, it actually helps us achieve our op ultimate objective of inclusion for the poor um, and marginalized communities in terms of driving towards a cashless economy. But the challenge here is the timing, right? So stakeholders could have been consulted and they're doing the right thing, but the right thing within the right time frame is also very critical. So you um, make the decision in October, um, the new Naira is effective in December. We only have about six weeks between then but, but and I, now. But I think that we're saying one and the same thing, but probably maybe in different languages. So if you're saying that stakeholders were consulted, then mm -hmm. why are we in a rush now? Why does it feel like you know we're still struggling with getting people to accept that even in the urban centers, you still have a lot of persons who are not very conversant with the note, and that's a lot. You also still have the issue of you know the notes not being in circulation. So what happens to those who are in the rural communities, those mm -hmm. who you say they are on bank? I mean, a, a huge... Uh, percentage of this persons are unbanked and probably poor. Yeah. So what's the implication? So the, re the reason I say stakeholders must have been consulted is because we can see it. So first of all, the CBN was particular to come out to say that they're going to leverage, they're going to have targeted um, responses to people in vulnerable communities, the vulnerable populations, by leveraging the agent network which makes sense because then you can't apply the same approach to the people in urban locations because you understand their own challenges, one of which is the proximity to the bank. So we're going to take the agents to them. What we're now saying is, do you have enough agents to reach these people in these locations in the time frame that you set? It may well be that you want to work with the agent um, coverage that you have, but then you probably can't do it in the time frame that you're working Just with. Just before Kofi comes in, now, yeah. surely, I'd like to ask, uh, paint a scenario. Now, just eight days before, you know, the withdrawal of uh, yeah, legal tender, yeah. we're in the open center. Mm -hmm. We haven't been able to lay our hands on. Kofi doesn't even have... That's why I asked <laughs> you have, you know... Kofi doesn't even have the notes now, now okay, right? Yeah, so, so, so what now happens to those in, in the rural community? The rural community? Yeah, yeah. So I think it was a couple of days ago that the CBN, and I think you guys talked about it earlier, they just released, um, they've um, launched that program, the cash flow program. So to your point about who's going to have access, and I think I've also heard people saying, we're trying to get this money, but the money isn't, isn't even in circulation. It's not accessible. It's not available. Now, I don't have that experience because I'm cashless, right? But then um, to the people in the rural communities, who would have the same challenge? The CBN is saying we're intentionally going into these locations to do cash swaps of up to 10,000 Naira. And then we're relaxing the requirements, which is the KYC, which was initially our concern. 
in terms of you're asking people for documentation that they don't have and imposing um, this approach on them, which basically just further excludes them. They've now relaxed that as well. So you can use your name, your BVN, and your voter's card, which we know that some of these populations have. So, so get I, I mean, I'll just allow Kofi to wait, but you know, I'm just still struggling to understand how we're not still, we're, in, we're talking about shortage of the notes now. We're still struggling, right? And uh, the, there's a lot of statement and mm -hmm. proclamation about, you know, having a cash swap. We don't have it. I mean, it's nowhere. It's almost so, like there's nothing. So how can these things be? So if the well, CBN... But ma'am, apparently, you're not the CBN governor, so exactly. let's not even put you in that... You no, know. no, so but I want to answer that. If the CBN, right, is saying that we're going to go into these communities, I like to believe that they have the cash, right? Because why are you, you making do? a statement and launching a program? No, they have the cash, and, and if they have the cash, my point is, why, why haven't we seen the cash? So, because so it, it, there should be a trickle-down effect. Absolutely. And so it should trickle down from the head to the bottom. That's what it should All be. Right. Kofi, it starts from the head down. So if you say that we are, you know, in the urban centers, one would believe. I mean, I'm just saying it's just, you know, logical reasoning. I'm wondering Anakul, that if... Could I play the devil's advocate? Go right? ahead. So, you know, one of the reasons they're also driving this is for us to use less cash. I just probably think <laughs> perhaps this is we're not printing a lot of this cash because ideally we want you to start to transact digitally. Do you see? Why am I going to print a huge amount of cash when I know that... Part of my ultimate aim is to drive a cashless economy. This is me playing the devil's advocate. But I do hear you because the time frame is, is stifling and it's unfair to the people in the rural communities. But like I said, um, the response in terms of going into these communities to do cash swaps is probably the, the solution. But then is eight days enough to do that when we understand that there's a gap in terms of the age coverage. So, so, so interesting that you took the word out of my mouth <laughs> by talking about this cash swap. Um, mm -hmm. um, so you, the, the Apex Bank is saying, I think on Friday, it released a circular to the DMBs. Um, mm -hmm. So they are saying they also going to do this in partnership, like you said, with the uh, super agents yeah. you know, and uh, the DMBs, deposit money banks that in different parts of the country. But like you said, we don't have enough don't. super agents. Um, so, except it's happened over the over, overnight, maybe or maybe there was just some sort of abracadabra, <laughs> you know. And then um, if we don't have enough of the banks around, you know, some local government areas are so big. Mm -hmm. I used to work in River State before I came to Lagos. Mm -hmm. You know, some local government areas are so big that to move from Port Harcourt to the local government headquarters is shorter than to move from the local government headquarters to a village somewhere in that place, you know. Those are bad rooms. Mm -hmm. If I know, exactly. I know a particular local government area that doesn't have a bank, mm -hmm. you know, in, in River State, then the, the local government chairman's campaign promise was that if he becomes a, <laughs> a, a, a chairman, yeah. you know, he was going to bring a bank there, you know. So, so these, these are the issues. So what do you think about this? And bearing in mind the CBN says they're going mm -hmm. to use the deposit money banks for this mm -hmm. cash. Or they're not going to go do it themselves. Mm. Um, they're going to leverage the agent yeah, network. Yeah. Um, I mean, at least the CBN is trying to do something. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's number one. Um, you said the, 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 the agents won't work, but the EMBs work. Obviously not. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, is it 10,000 naira enough? Um, if you look at the population that we're talking about in truth, right? So yes, they're cash driven mm -hmm. and yes, they save in cash and transact in cash daily, etc. But they earn a daily means of income. Mm -hmm. I'm unlikely to be holding cash that is a huge amount. In some, fact, some, some people have... They're cash in, they bury it in the ground, you know. So I, no, I agree. But in terms of, so as, as an immediate sort of solution, right? Mm -hmm. um, how much cash, and I don't have this number. Could they possibly have that is in excess of 10,000 naira? Because if you look at their lifestyle, if they're spending on a daily basis, then um, there's a likelihood that, you know, they're not holding cash as much as people in the urban communities. Okay, so they even deal with, you know, with, um, it's not, with so, barter. So we're looking at the hard to reach communities, the places where even the reason why the agent coverage probably isn't as high is because of insecurity challenges. It's because as you mentioned, the bad roads. And so even if CBN wanted to do anything, which is why I keep talking about the time frame, yes, you can use the agent network. It's probably the one that makes the most sense. But in what time frame can well, you, you think, address you think the those amount challenges? Of money is, is, is okay, 10,000 naira. Because what they're saying is that if, if you have an amount above 10,000 naira, you still be covered. But it may be treated as cash in deposits into wallets or bank accounts. Mm -hmm. You know, um, will that work? If I live in a village where there's no financial institution and you want to 
tell me that this money I'm, I'm, I want to give you, I brought 100,000, give me a new Naira. Yeah. You say, no, I'm going to give you only 10,000. The 90,000, I'm going to put in an account. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I do not know where, I can't see the money. As a villager, will I say, okay, take it. Oh, I say no. My money is going to go where I don't know. No, yeah. um, bam, 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 bam. no you're right. Absolutely. I mean, so the, this to your to your point. I think that's the trust element of the reasons why they don't also bank. And I think that while the reason I say ten thousand is because we're aware that this ends on the thirty first. Nothing had been done. We'd been largely concerned about these people because of the requirements, KYC, etc. But the CBNs come out to say that, okay, we're trying to do something. Do I agree that the amount is sufficient? Maybe not, maybe. I don't know. But then the challenge Seems also... You don't, you don't want to get into... In, no, no. The condition cost of CBN. <laughs> because because if, if I need far from, you know why? from a, a bank yeah. or which, whatever... Where I, have to, I have to speak with data. Yeah. I don't know that 10,000 Naira is too much or too big. But, but yes. right? Talk, talk um, about the person in village who has 100,000. Exactly, in the ground, which is... In his compound. Exactly. So again, those people, what's going to happen to their money? And if you're forcing them to have a wallet, do they have a good understanding? And do they trust that system enough to be able to pass with their cash? Mm -hmm. This is what we're saying. And, and our access. Because if, if I give you the 90,000, yeah. and I use the 10,000 and pay my child's fees. What happens to the rest of my money? And, do and I then know? I want to take more. I have to now drive a bicycle. You know, how many hours to the, the nearest bank? So, 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 so it brings me back, you know, yeah. to the question of why haven't we decided to, I mean, we say the reason why local government exists mm -hmm. is to bring governance close to the people. So why haven't we thought about, you know, policy formulation to bring banking, you know, this institution, to the seamlessness, you know, to this community? Well, that's what, that's what, that's what the agent network exists for. That's well, why so, so, but how swift is the agent network? Because how, was how it talking, swift? Yes, is the question. Because so we're still talking about 10,000. I mean, that's where it brings us back to now. So we're looking at a limit of, okay, 10,000 is what you're going to give. Mm -hmm. How did they arrive at 10,000? You know, was it just that you looked at the people <laughs> guess, and then you yeah. said, ah, these people are poor, you know, they don't have roads, and so 10,000 might just be what they can consume in a day or want to spend in a day, really. So... Uh, there are several questions, you know. And I hear you, but um, I can't really answer for the CBN. I'm speaking <laughs> about the, the side that I understand, the demand side, which is these people, what their challenges are. And also then, what we're trying to do is highlight as much as possible with data, right? To say that these people, 50% of them save in cash. Um, this is what their reasons are for not banking. In the time frame that you set, are, are you able to overcome these challenges even as you're trying your best to make sure that they have access. Ch yeah, can, can we agree? I mean, yes. I, 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 I re understand and respect your, mm -hmm. your desire to really speak with data. Mm -hmm. You understand? But can we, can we hit the nail on the head? Because okay. all you seem to be saying, mm -hmm. you know, if I want to put it in a way that, you know, the amount of street can understand, is a CBN embarked on a, 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 a wild goose chase. They embarked on a journey uh, uh, without any of plan. You know, it's like step setting out to go to, uh, maybe you want to go to Ikoyi mm -hmm. from VI, and you don't know where Ikoyi is. Mm -hmm. And you didn't ask anybody, where is Ikoyi? How do I get there? And you didn't even get a map to plan your route. Because there's a, there are a lot of, of inconsistencies and somersaults with this policy. First of all, you say that you're going to put only 200 naira into the ATMs. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, you now tell the banks that, okay, one Nigerians come and you know exchange their money, but don't give it to them over the counter anymore. New naira mm -hmm. notes. Mm -hmm. So if they give it to you and you want them to withdraw, they're going to draw only two hundred naira. So they've been changing the policies. Now there are a lot of ifs and maybes mm -hmm. with this whole cash swap idea. You know there are a lot of ifs. For instance, you talked about and this is a fantastic point you raised, yeah. which has brought me to this question. You talked about the fact that a lot of these. These are, are persons in rural areas, are vulnerable and the poor mm -hmm. in our society. The federal government says, I want to give how many billion through conditional cash transfers. That, yeah, exactly. that one's another topic for another day. Which would be enabled yeah. if people went cashless and had to select. Like You've said, no, this we don't have BVNs. NIN. And NIN. Mm. Now, you said they're going to waive the KYC, but the thing is, can you open a wallet or an account without any form of identification? No, any so form of identification. Can you? So you know the, the, the CBN's KYC tier, there's tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. Okay. Tier 3 is the highest where you need all the formal forms of ID. Okay. The, the lower tiers are a bit more relaxed. So if you have a form of ID, then you can open a wallet, which just has limitations in terms of the volume of transaction what that you can do. What kind of ID? Um, a voter's card. 
They don't have what that's then said. for the for the tier one, I think you can just use your your name and your number and um, no something. Number. Yeah. Okay. So with the tier one, but what that does is it limits the volume of transaction that okay. you can do. So they can go without the the any identification. Just say take my phone number and my name. Yes, but in this instance, what CBN is trying to also do is that they must provide NIN, BVN, or voter's card. You see, our data shows yeah. that. Um, most of them have a form of ID in terms of whether voter's card, right? That would allow them to open a tier one account. But then they don't have the um, proof of address, which is a requirement for tier three, which was originally what CBN had requested. Okay. So when I say the relaxed, it is different from what they initially started off with, which would have totally put these people out of um, this process, taking them out of the process. But coming to relax these requirements and also then taking the agents to them it's sort of a step in the right direction, but we still don't think it's enough because the time to, to address the issues and ensure yeah. that this happens is, is just not sufficient in our opinion. You advo this in, in a sentence because we're out of yes. time. What are you advocating the CBN do now in order to avert the crisis? Okay, because people don't want to yeah. save money for years under a mango tree in the compound mm -hmm. and then you come take it from them and they, they won't want to give you the money. So what are they to do now? Is it to extend the deadline to say, oh, we made a mistake. We are sorry, Nigerians. We, we, we messed this up. Forgive us. We're going to extend it. Oh, I, I don't know about them coming and saying we made a mistake, but I think that what would be good is if there's an extension, just again, because I, as I've reiterated, I don't think that we have the agent network coverage to achieve the, the goal that they intend to achieve in terms of making sure that these people um, have access before the deadline. So what that looks like, I don't know. And then more overarchingly, as these policies have been, have been designed, you know, we always sort of advocate for them to design with the vulnerable, most vulnerable populations in mind. I think it's a very important uh, segment of society you're covering. Yeah. Because you're speaking for the voiceless, Mercy. Yeah. And uh, those who do not have any say, they're not even captured. Mm -hmm. You know, the central bank is saying they want the super agents to be the ones to, uh, uh, what do you call it, sensitize them on wallets and all that, yeah. which is crazy, you know, because at the end of the day, how many, what kind of sensitization can you do from today exactly to Exactly what we're saying, so the time amazing. frame. Amazing, amazing, really amazing. How yeah. much do these guys pay again to think about a, a macro economy? I think my only concern is also in this process, they're going to ask the, these people to also pay at some point for that service to the agents, which I mean, then I mean, I mean. puts another um, spanner in the wheel. It's, I again, ask how much do they get paid to run the central bank? I mean, we need to ask those questions. How much do they get paid? Uh, China Sakolin Zobo, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. You did very much. well. Thank and I think uh, you, will do, you will stay in the middle. Um, she's the head inclusion uh, for all initiatives. It's also an organization that, uh, you know, looks after the vulnerable and poor, the unbanked, the financially excluded. We hope to have you back. Thank you very much. Well, well, we'll be talking about the 2023 elections coming up next. And of course, many candidates have signed peace accords, but are they really, really honest about a non-violent or violence-free and, of course, uh, issue-based campaign. So we'll discuss that when we come back.